Over the last few weeks, I've been intermittently working on a new editing desk setup here at the studio, and today I'm finally going to show it to you. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and that's how the cookie crumbles. So this video doesn't have a clear disclosure. Some of the components were supplied by the brands that I'll be discussing and others I bought. But I'll be giving you my honest opinions of each piece either way. This video does have a sponsor, though, and that's Gear Focus. More about them later on in the video. All right, so this is the new setup. So I'm just gonna give you some mini reviews of everything I'm using here that becomes the entire editing desk, if you will. And start off, I'll start with the desk and the chair, both of which are from Autonomous. Now, I've already had this desk for a little while. In fact, in my I made a previous video about an editing setup and this desk was included. It's a sit-stand desk, so it goes up like that. And it works well, you know, it's well built. I like it, I like the color of it and everything. I'm not big into cable management, meaning that I don't think, I think it's overrated. I think people try too hard, you know, nobody looks at your desk other than you and then you share the photos, so what do you care? Make it functional, function over form. Because this is a sit-stand desk, there is a function aspect to cable management because you have to make sure your cables don't get torn out when the desk goes up and down. So I did make sort of a cable harness here that, you know, works well at both heights. But on the desk top, I only did medium cable management and typically I'm all about cords for things like I like a corded keyboard, a corded mouse, so I've got those to contend with. The monitor speakers here have cables but I kind of hid them into the parts in the desk which is nice that the desk comes with that. Monitor has cords, my interface has cords, but yeah, I did my best to make it look good. But we'll get more into all those parts in a second. Next up, Autonomous also sent over this chair. This is their Ergo Chair Pro. It feels pretty good. I have some things I really like about it and some things that I'm sort of so-so on. Build quality compared to the desk, it feels... Okay, so it's all plastic. But if you can imagine something that's a plastic build that feels solid going together, that's what this was like. It wasn't as metal as some of the, you know, gamer chairs that I had before, but it's much more comfortable than the gamer chairs that I had before. So I like it, but there are some things I don't like. For example, these arms here, they're adjustable, which is nice. Like you can slide them forward, back, they go, they twist a little bit, and I think they even go in and out like that. But it's not with any kind of lock, so sometimes, you know, you'll be doing something, maybe you lean too hard, and then the thing slides back on you, so you kind of get used to that. You can also go up and down with them. So I like all the adjustability. It's just, at times it feels just a little bit rickety, because it's all plastic. The elbow pads are pretty comfortable, and the seat is great. And there's a lot of adjustment, like I said. Oh, including there's a headrest, which I like. With gamer chairs, you know they come with that weird little neck pad? What do you, where do you put that? that? That never does anything. So on this side, there's a lever. It lets you, you know, basically it unlocks the back. And then there's a crank over here, I think, that lets you adjust the, the tension for that so you can set it to the level that you like, but you can definitely sort of ease back with it. And when you release this one, and then the other one at the same time, you can slide your butt forward or backwards so you can get like quite the, so if you do that and this, then you can, you know, you can almost like lay down in the chair. And then also on this side, you have your typical raise and lower the chair. And I'm happy with the heights and it hasn't really sunk down on me or anything weird. I think that for the price, it, it feels just maybe just slightly overpriced, $100, $150 less, I would say best chair in its price point. At its current price point, it just feels like a like a decent option. I've had better posture and stuff using it. So if you're coming from a gaming chair, which you can actually get some gaming chairs at the same price, I would definitely get this instead. I feel like it's better for your posture and overall pretty good chair. Okay, moving on. Computer, I, I built a whole new machine for this setup, but I'm not going, this is gonna be separate. I'm gonna take it out of here and we'll talk about the computer separately. But one thing you will notice is you can't really see inside it. There is no RGB in this machine and I'm kind of proud about that, even though I have my own lights going on here, but I wanted to build a computer, especially if you remember my last, this is another build that I did with uh, Gigabyte Aorus. From my previous one, I had all these RGB parts and then I was getting, you know, interference coming out of my monitor speakers and everything and the RGB turning on and off or making sounds like through the speakers, so. And I also just don't, I don't personally love RGB that much. I like good, clean, solid looking components. And so that's what this is filled with and I can't wait to show you the parts that are inside, but RGB free PC. And I'm using the Fantex P600S gray version of the case. So it kind of matches this overall, you know, monochrome aesthetic kind of thing. 
The carpet was originally here when I had this set up for, it was a couch and a TV. So it was like a nice little rug to kind of walk on, but I thought I'd leave it here. It, uh, the chair actually, which isn't probably great for a rug, but the chair moves nicer on the rug than it does on my normal sort of slate floors. That's one thing I would say about the autonomous chairs, it moves nicely even on a short haired rug. Oh, and in case you're wondering, because I mentioned the rug and the computer, there's a piece of black wood that's hard to see, but it's a little bit bigger than the computer and the computer's sitting on it, not directly on the rug. Because I'm not a monster, I'm not gonna let rug fibers all up in my fans. These are Yamaha HS5s uh, for the studio monitors. Like them, bought those myself. I've had these ones for a little, for, for a little while now, a couple years. And then I've got those, uh, whatever they're called, ISO acoustic, you know, isolation uh, pads, which I, I think are pretty good too. And then over here, this one, which is what's connecting to the monitor speakers. Audience sent this over recently. I haven't had a chance to talk about it, so this will be my opportunity here. Thanks, Audient. This is their ID4 Mark II. I've been using the ID4 for a while, and so I was excited to try this one out, but I wanted a reason to do it, so that's it here. It's basically the same, uh, the exact same design, like from the look of it, but there are a couple things that have changed. First off, this button here, which is illuminated now, uh, instead of pressing it to mute your speakers, it being on means your speakers are on. If, you, if it turns off, then your speakers are off. Sometimes I put on headphones and then I mute the speakers. In this case, you turn your speakers on. So that's just one small change. But the change that I really like is the back two ports, the TRS ports that go to your monitor speakers. On the previous one, the left output was on the right and the right output was on the left. And so your cables always crossed over. I, don't, I never really understood that. Well, now they flip them. The cable goes directly from the left side of the interface to the left speaker and the right to the right. It's a small thing, but you know, it made a difference. They said that it's supposed to sound better. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't really notice, but we're talking, you know, marginal differences, but it still sounds great. And the knobs, they're a little bit more clicky and it just feels like a bit more modern design and I like the new, you know, darker gray aesthetic to it. And uh, software wise, it now has the loopback function that the Evos had that the original IDs don't. So now you can get loopback recording on that if you want to as well and USB-C instead of the old USB-B like printer cable that the old one used. Uh, now it's on USB-C, which is great. So overall, it's, you know, 2021 version of the ID4, and this would probably be my go-to recommendation for an audio interface at its price point. I love it. All right, next up, let's talk about the monitor. This is the BenQ SW271C. I've already talked about and used the SW271, which is why when I needed a new monitor for the setup, I reached out to BenQ and was like, hey, you got something like that one? Because I was a big fan of that one. And they were like, well, we have the C on the end. And so basically it's kind of just like a refresh. It's really only minor improvements. And I would say that probably for some people, if you swap theirs out, they might not be able to tell. It has hardware calibration, which is great with like, I think a 14, 14 bit, maybe, maybe 16 bit uh, hardware LUT that you can install for uh, calibration, which worked excellently. And having used sort of a not so color accurate ultra wide for the last little while, and then switching back to this and looking at my videos again on here, they just look great. So the skin tones look better. It's like, that's exactly how I wanted it to look. Uh, so I love the image coming out of this thing. There's a couple, you know, pros and cons, if I had to give a quick review on it. For the price, you're really paying for the, the look of the image in SDR. The SDR image on this is fantastic. If you want HDR, the, I, even though that says it has HDR certifications, the, the peak brightness isn't bright enough and it's not true 10 bit either, it's 8 bit FRC, which is basically a, you know, a way to change colors really quickly so you can kind of create all the colors without actually having the ability to output them all simultaneously. You just change them so fast that you feel like you have all 10 bit colors there. So for the price, I feel like you should be getting a proper 10-bit HDR panel, but you're not. But at the same time, you are getting a really, really, really nice, it just has a character to it that I really like for your SDR content. And so since I still edit and do all my YouTube videos in SDR, it doesn't really bother me. My YouTube videos look fantastic on the screen. I just feel like for the price, maybe it's a bit too expensive for that. It also comes with those panels that you can have coming out here if you have if you, if you have light that you need to control from spill and act, and getting on your screen, two on the side and one on the top. I don't have them on because I don't really need them because I can control the light in here. It's a great monitor. I just feel like 
Maybe it's not that great for the price with just with, with the small changes that came with the refresh. So this is a new product for me. This is the HyperX Alloy Origins. Now, I'm not one that really goes in for gamer keyboards. I, I typically just prefer a standard layout and I like a little bit of a backlight, but I don't like crazy RGB on the keyboard either. You'll notice I did the keyboard and mouse in the purple color. I've noticed that a lot of the keyboards that are designed like duckies and stuff like that are, that are designed for keeping that simple look have really gone with, with a shorter design, like a 60% or maybe a couple macros, but they don't have a 10 key. But if you want an actual full size 10 key keyboard, uh, it's a little bit tricky to get a standard layout with just simple USB-C and not a lot of extra features. So for the price, this HyperX Alloy Origins does pretty much that. You don't need any fancy software to really get it up and running. You can just plug it in, it's USB-C and it's detachable right from the keyboard. And it's just a simple standard, you know, standard keyboard. As far as, I, there might be a couple options. This one uses their switches that they call, you can see here, the Hyper Aqua Tactile. It's their own switches. But I would say comparably, to me, they're kind of like MX Browns. I would say that they fall somewhere between uh, Cherry MX Browns with like a little bit leaning towards the MX Reds. So they're not quite as, they're definitely tactile. They don't, they're not quite as clicky. Uh, not that the Browns are very clicky, but the Browns just have a little bit more, I find like a little bit more ping to them. These ones are a little bit more, you know, a little bit softer but I quite like them. So Aqua switches, but HyperX Alloy Origins is a pretty decent little keyboard. As far as the mouse, there's nothing new over here. This is still a Logitech G502. I have like three of these things and every one of my computers runs them. Uh, I've always been a fan of this. I don't know why, I just I think it feels great. I like the weight of it. And even though I never use any of the extra buttons, this one's kind of got gamery buttons. I really only need like a three button mouse, but I just really like the way the 502 feels. And this is the, I think the Proteus Spectrum or whatever, so you can, Make the little G purple if you want. I put a little sound treatment stuff up. These are those janky panels I made myself a couple years ago and then some foam. Foam is mostly decorative there. So let's take the computer and I'll throw it over on the desk and I'll tell you about the parts that are in there. Unless this video's run too long at this point, then I might just go over there and end it and make a separate video about the computer. We'll find out in a couple seconds. Now while Editor Gerald reviews that last scene to decide where to end this video, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Gear Focus. Something they might not know about Gear Focus is that they aren't just for cameras and lenses. I've actually had great success selling computer components and other editing gear there as well. So if you're updating your own editing station, consider selling your old stuff on Gear Focus, which in turn will help fortify the used market on there for other shoppers looking to build an editing setup with quality pre-owned gear. The interface is simple and intuitive and they're constantly adding new functionality to help you buy or sell your gear more efficiently. And best of all, they offer the lowest fees in the game. Well, if you're like me, the best aspect is that you avoid all those annoying questions and lowball offers you get from conventional marketplaces. Basically, in my opinion, Gear Focus is the best platform to sell your gear currently and they're only getting better. So thanks again to them for sponsoring this video and make sure you check them out using the link in the description below. All right, so based on the current length of this video, I think it'll be better if I turn this PC build into a separate episode so that I don't feel rushed. So you can expect that in a couple days. See you then. But that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure to leave the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, try setting the playback speed to 75%. All right, I'm done.